forward to hearing any info on sales, how to increase sales. I have a page group with pretty good engagement, but man alive, <laughs> not translating into sales and new team members. So this is another one of those wide open questions. Um, here's what we know. We know that you have a page in a group with pretty good engagement. We don't necessarily know what kind of engagement you're getting and what kind of things you're posting, right? Um, and we're also not sure, Colette, what steps you're taking. Because here, here's what I know to be true. It doesn't matter how great the content is in your group, how great the culture is in your group, and how great the engagement is, if you're not actually starting conversations with humans because there is no transaction that is gonna take place in the comments of a post, right? So your group is designed to create culture so that people feel like they're a part of something awesome, to provide great info that makes somebody's life better, easier, or more fun in some way. So they keep coming back, they keep stay around the campfire, right? And it's also designed to continue to drip on them. So groups and pages are <clears throat> almost like a really good follow-up tool in a weird way, because it takes six to 12 exposures for the average person to be ready to make a buying decision. So if they're in a group like that and you're doing things the right way, it can help to keep those exposures coming, even if it's not you directly all the time. But it doesn't replace it. So you still need to be taking action on creating conversations with those people. You need to get into their inbox. There's no way for you to hide behind your computer and never talk to people, not in this profession. So anyone who's telling you you can, <laughs> all right, maybe yeah, you gotta you gotta up. ask for that sale and and the. The thing about sales is there's so often a mindset component with that. Like, I don't know if you feel icky or weird, like asking for the sale and you're like expecting, well, they're in my group. They know I sell this. They'll reach out if they want it. Oh, so not true. You have to still ask for that sale. I hope you are, Colette. Um, if you are and you're still not getting that sale, Remember that the follow up, just just keep going with your follow up and, um, you know, help people arrive. I always plug the training inside of Rank Makers with Sabrina, where um, not. She, uh, Ray has an amazing training in Rank Makers. I don't know if you're a Rank Maker, but if you want to improve your sales, definitely a great place to be. He has a training in there with his daughter and his daughter was basically selling him on playing a game with him. She said, daddy, daddy, can you play this game with me? And he said, no, no, honey, because he, he was working on something. And, and it, she says, oh, well, daddy, daddy, will you just open the game for me? Just takes him to the next step. So he's opening up the game. And then she says, daddy, daddy, if you could be any color you know, playing piece, which would you be? And he's like, he picks it and he's like, but Sabrina, I'm not going to play with you. Like he keeps saying no, he keeps saying no. But next thing you know, the whole game is set up. He's picked a playing piece when the next logical step is just to play the game. So I always think about that with prospects. It's like we, sometimes we want to just jump to the close. We want to condense the close. We want to get that sale and it's good to be hungry. But there's, you know, that might be why you feel like you're not getting your sale, your sales, because you're so focused on closing that you're missing those steps in between. Yeah, hundred percent. And back to your original point too, Jennifer, like somebody could think your group, your products, your opportunity are like the coolest thing they've ever seen in their whole life. Like literally they've never seen anything more awesome ever as long as they've been alive they still will not message you <laughs> and they won't it's just human psychology if it happens you got lucky they just happen to be really bold most people will not do that you have to ask the question 
You have to. And a lot of people, when I look at people's conversations, um, and you may find this as well, Jennifer, they aren't leaning into stories enough. Like they're, they're, they're really focused on facts. And I don't know, Colette, what it is with you and, and where you are in this process because we only have limited information. But even when people do get people into messenger inboxes and start conversations, they're still really focused on facts and laying it out for people. And you really need to learn to market to people's hearts, to speak to people's hearts. Like that's not what moves people is facts. In fact, the more facts you share, the more they're able to kind of rule it out. The more evidence you give them that it may not be for them. You don't want to do that. You want to really lean into stories, share those testimonials, share things that are going to move them. Get into the inboxes. I can't say it enough. That's really, really important. Okay. If people don't buy products, they buy emotions and things that connect with their identity. A hundred percent. Absolutely. You can find more great marketing, prospecting, and recruiting tips just like these over at rayhigden.com. And remember to pick up your free copy of his 29 sources of network marketing leads. We'll see you over there.